Welcome to another episode of Herbal Healing. My name is Peter Jackson Main, and today we're back in the beautiful Cambridge Botanic Gardens, and we're going to be showing you the best herbs for lung health. Today we're going to be looking at some plants that have a real strong role to play in treating conditions of the lungs and the respiratory tract. Now most people these days, if they get affected by something like this, are going to go straight to the chemist, or maybe they don't even need to do that because they've probably got the medicines in their medicine cabinets at home. They're going to be picking up the cough syrup, the paracetamol for example, remedies that do help with symptoms but very little else. We're going to be taking you through a natural approach to treating conditions of the lungs and the respiratory track approaches that don't suppress symptoms but which help your body to deal with these conditions naturally and then return you to excellent health in double quick time so as usual we're going to be looking at the plants teaching you how to identify them how they work what we can use them for and of course how you can prepare them and make use of them in your own homes in your own kitchens so what we're looking at here is plantain we have two varieties of plantain that we use in herbal medicine. Uh, the one that's not here is the broadleafed plantain, uh, which as suggested has big round leaves. And that one you might know if you've ever tried to grow an immaculate lawn, because what often happens is that a plantain seed gets into the middle of that and, and you get these sort of rosettes which gardeners actually hate coming up in your lawn. If they only knew the value of this plant medicinally, they might not be so quick to poison them out. This one is Plantago lanceolata, lance-leaved plantain, so-called because the leaves are thin and narrow. And this one, again, you can see has gone to seed, but we do have a couple of uh, heads in flower down here, uh, one over here. So there are a few, it's just on the edge of, of disappearing, but it's nice to be able to see the flower heads on this plant as we look at it today. We probably heard the word mucilage in connection with herbs for the respiratory tract, and this is the big benefit and virtue of this plant as well, or, or one of them. Mucilage is actually a, a plant constituent that's basically a carbohydrate, but it has a kind of slimy uh, kind of quality, but it is fully uh, uh, dissolvable in water. So in fact, um, it's a very, very useful uh, because we can actually get the mucilage out of the plant with very, very little preparation or processing. In fact, one of the best ways to do it, any mucilaginous plant, is just to soak it in water and then you can actually drink that the next day. Um, and of course the mucilage will be very easily extracted into decoctions, into uh, infusions and of course tincture making as well. And one of the roles of mucilage is to soothe and heal and protect the mucous membranes that cover or line the inside of the chest cavity. And this is a really good plant for doing that and for also helping, helping get that mucus up. But it has this other quality which we can make use of in other contexts as well. It kind of sucks out all the bad stuff and then enables us to expel it. And that applies to wounds, for example. We can uh, dry it and powder it and use it as wound powder. It will take all the debris and all the possible infective material out of the wound. Now, in traditional herbal medicine, Western herbal medicine, we would see this plant as an alterative. And that's a word that we use in herbal medicine to describe something that helps to cleanse the blood and also the lymph. And this plant in particular is uh, known as a refrigerating alterative. This is from the North American tradition because it's considered that it takes the heat out of things. So you can see how it might be very effective for any infective condition, but also for bites and stings. So I'll give you a little tip with this one. Um, if I could just do a simple demonstration here, just the tip of a leaf. I'm just going to chew it up a little bit. Mush it up in your mouth with, with the saliva. And then if you get stung while you're out and about and you see one of these plants, do this, then take it out, rub it on the sting just like that. And if you can, just keep it there for a while. It will take the heat out of the sting. In fact, plantain is a fantastic plant for dealing with any kinds of bites or stings. And you can take it internally and it'll work just as well. Now the plant we're looking at here is Elecampane. 
Inula helenium in Latin. And there are actually a few Inula species around uh, and about me as I speak here. The one in the, mi uh, in the middle, in the, the really tall one, is called Inula magnifica. But it's this one, Elecampane, uh, Inula helenium, that we prize in herbal medicine, specifically as an all-inclusive chest remedy. It's an excellent expectorant. It has warming, almost pungent properties which help to thin out mucus so that it can be easily expelled. And by the way, it also has heart protective properties as well. So that pungency is sort of stimulating to the circulation and again protective to the heart because as you probably know, the heart and the lungs are kind of plumbed in together. So if there's a problem in one, there's likely to be a problem in the other too. So chest congestion over a long period of time can upset the heart. So this is a plant that we might use in chest infections. Quite often we partner it with echinacea actually, especially if there is an actual viral infection or something like that. Um, but we can also use it in asthma, very very good remedy for asthma and almost any condition affecting the chest. And there are a number of uh, kind of more chronic pathologies, chronic bronchitis for example, bronchiectasis, all of those kind of things will respond really really well to this plant. Now it's the root of the plant that we use and in that root there is up to 45% of this chemical compound called inulin. And inulin is basically a simple sugar and it's a sugar that can actually give you the experience of uh, boosting your blood sugar but without actually spiking it. So it's a very, very safe plant to use if, for example, you're diabetic. In fact, inulin is a remedy in itself that diabetics can use as a sweetener in order to help them stabilize their blood sugar. And as if that wasn't enough, we also have that role of inulin in treating digestive complaints as well. So this is a plant that I would very often use in cases where the microbiota, the flora, of the digestive tract are out of balance because inulin will actually feed the good bacteria in your gut as well. So a host of medicinal benefits from this plant. I would be using, as I said, the root and we probably do it in a tincture uh, most occasions. But of course you could also make a decoction out of it. Remember that with roots and tougher plant materials we always want to cook it up a little bit. So a decoction would be made by chopping the root up into small pieces popping it in a pan with some water, boiling with a lid on for about 10 minutes, that's all you need. Um, and then you would have a fantastic chest remedy for any, pretty much any eventuality affecting the chest, including asthma, by the way. It's a really great asthma remedy as well, as I can testify to because I used to suffer from it. Now this plant is one that many of you are going to recognise from your kitchen gardens. It is of course thyme, thymus vulgaris, which means common thyme. Um, and it's usually the vulgaris species that are the ones that we choose for medicinal purposes as well. There are many types of thyme, many different species of thyme, and they're all very similar actually. And one of the things that they all have in common of course is the high content of volatile oils, essential oils. And you can check this out very easily by simply uh, rubbing some of these leaves between your fingertips and then the very familiar scent of thyme comes forward. Um, so thyme is uh, particularly well endowed with a, an essential oil called thymol. Thymol is in fact in demand commercially as well and it's found in uh, as an isolated compound in products like mouthwashes for example. So it's that uh, really hardcore antiseptic property that we're looking at here. This will take out most types of infection. In fact, all over the body, not just in the respiratory tract as we're talking about, but also, for example, in the digestive tract as well, where it's a really good antiparasitic and it will help to rebalance your gut microbiome by taking out some of the bacteria that you don't want in there. So a very, very powerful antiseptic and a particularly good herb for the respiratory tract, where it will deal with most affectations of the respiratory tract and it's also a good expectorant as well. That word, of course, meaning to, uh, to, to get rid of debris from the lungs, old catar, mucus, etc. So it helps you to bring up stuff. It is absolutely indispensable in a chest remedy for conditions like bronchitis, including chronic bronchitis um, and any infective condition, but also in conditions that aren't necessarily infective, like asthma, because those essential oils also have very relaxing antispasmodic effects.
effects as well. Now usually we're going to make a tea out of thyme, uh, very easy to do, you just pick a few sprigs, rub them nicely between your hands, drop them in a cup, pour over your boiling water and there you go. But we can also get it as a tincture of course or as an essential oil. Uh, thyme essential oil is a really good one to add if you're making up a, uh, a little uh, mouthwash for yourself for example. So really easy to use, really easy to grow. It is a Mediterranean plant but it grows really nicely here although I have to say that in the last few days we've had Mediterranean weather too. Um, so one not to be missed this. So if you can grow a little pot of thyme it will grow quite nicely in a pot. Really really easy uh, and accessible plant. These plants are not just for when you're ill, by the way. They can also help to strengthen your lungs and keep them in top condition all year round, especially if you have a weakness in that direction. Please remember to subscribe to our channel. And if you have any ideas for herbs or conditions that you would like us to cover in future episodes, do pop them in the comments. So that's it, guys. We hope we've given you some great tips for lung health. And we'll see you in the next episode.